today on Commitment to Truth. So before you and I can even start doing good or doing anything of value in and through the body of Christ, there's only one source for our works. If there's confusion in that, then there will always be confusion in your works. There will be eternal fruitlessness. Everything you put your hand to, it should translate over into a good work. It's not merely now for me and my sorbet gang because everything we do should be unto him and for him and through him and by him. Makes sense. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. So if you can open your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In this next part of the sermon series, which is about three sections of this next part, I'm going to launch this part and Pastor Jose is going to come next week to to uh, explain some of the other points that are found within this, this section of our series. We're going to be in verses 1 uh, in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians verses 1 through 31. But we are only going to be in verses 1 through 10. So if we can start with verses 1 through 6. And I'm going to give you about two uh, answers to the question. How can we ensure that space is always available for your good works? How can we double down and say, you know what, at the end of the day, we as a church, we as a people, we want to ensure that there's always space for you and for anyone else who's coming after you here in this local church. Make sense? All right, beginning with verses 1 through 6, it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Corinth. It says, I do not want you to be unaware. Do you hear that? Because there's a lot of people who are unaware, even still today. It says, you know that when you were pagans, and remember we talked about this last week, that there was this former life. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today, there was this former way of living, that we were pagans. You were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. So you can say that that's a Trinitarian uh, definition. In other words, that is the Trinity, because Trinity is not, it's a theological word. It's not the word Trinity you won't find in the Bible, but you will see the nuances and the definitions of what a Trinity is. You see God the Father here, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit nestled within these verses. Why is that important? Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is the ultimate source of your good works. So before you and I can even start doing good or doing anything of value in and through the body of Christ. And we must understand and remember there's only one source for our works. If there's confusion in that, then there will always be confusion in your works. There will be eternal fruitlessness. You follow me? You could go and do some good things. You can go down the street at the uh, animal shelter and do good things. My, right? Remember we talked about works is everything you put your hand to. Every idea you have. Every business adventure you want to embark upon. Every job you have. Every credit you take in school. Should translate when you come from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. It should translate over into a good work because everything we do should be 
unto him and for him and through him and by him. Make sense? It's not merely now for me and my sorbet gang. My business it doesn't, is not in existence for me to make money. I'm not getting up every day merely to just make money for me and my family. I am doing it for the glory of God, which then some way, somehow becomes for the good of others. You follow me? So everything we set our hands to do, our minds to do, it should translate now, if you've put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, it should translate into a good work. So that being said, that good work only comes through God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who are one. And that's important because that's a foundational truth of our faith. If you don't believe it comes through God, if you don't think, believe it comes through uh, the Holy Spirit, you will then do things powerless. You won't have the authority. You won't have the power because greater is he that is in me than he is what? In the world. He empowers you to do the good work and be consistent in the good work even when you don't want to do the good work. So if you only accept part of this, you then will partially, what, you will, I don't know if there's a thing to do partially good works, right? So when you look at this, there's only one source for our good works. So it says, you see three, you see the one word appears three times, the same. This word in the Greek, it means himself. So in, in the lordship, right, of Christ, you see himself, you see Christ, you see himself, you see the Holy Spirit, you see himself, you see the Son, you see himself, you see God, you see the Father, you see himself. But it's interesting because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit agrees, which is the next part of their definition, is to agree. The same means himself, the same means agreement, thirdly, to be like-minded, it also means of the same lump. When you see God, you see the Son. When you see God, you see the Holy Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit. He moves. God is moving. The Son is moving. You follow me? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, speaks of this, if you would, triple affirmation of source. It's my little phrase for you today. It's this. There is one body... And one spirit, just also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, and in some key words, listen, of all who is over all and through all and in all. That's why it's important to understand where the source comes from. Because the source is of all in its totality. It is over all. It is through all of you. And it is, he is in all of you. It's not it, but he is in all of you, right? So there is only one source by which we are uh, given uh, our good works. Only one source, making sense hopefully so far. But here's, here's something else. Uh, what else does this affirmation of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, this like-minded source, what else does it bring to us when we are uh, being obedient and doing these good works? If you look at James chapter 1, verse 17, and what this does, it confirms the reliability of the source of your works. And I'm giving you all this information because some of us are not as easily convinced, all right? And you, you and I need to be convinced that our source is our source and he is faithful. Right? You could pay your bill every single day, but your lights can still go out. <laughs> Look, wait a minute, I just paid my bill, right? I don't, have you ever lights everyone out and you question, did I pay my bill, right? <laughs> so I know I pay my bill, <laughs> Right, especially before direct, you know, deposit or withdrawal or whatever. But, it, you know, it's like, oh, no, I paid my bill, didn't I? I'm early on in our marriage before all the electronics, you know, you know, payments. Lights would go out. 
Lisa and I find each other, she's because I handled the finances. Did you pay the bill? Right? Which is synonymous when you're doing good works, you may get frustrated, you may do good works for a season, you see no fruit, no one's responding, and it's like, wait a minute, God, did you pay your bill? You follow me? It's like, well, is the source not the source? The source is the source. Bills are always paid. Even if the lights are fluttering and you're, you're in seasons of darkness and fruitlessness, the source is the source. And it's important to understand that and hold on to it. And that's why you look at James 1, verse 17. It says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, listen to what it says, with whom there is no variation, no change or shifting. There's no turning. There's no shadow. There's no variation to him at all. So when I heard the word shadow, I said, let me, let me kind of see how a human shadow works. Listen, stay with me today. So understanding a person's shadow can help us gain greater confidence in the reliability of the source of our good works. As the earth rotates in and out of daylight, an object's shadow changes in length and direction over the course of a day. From Earth's surface, the sun, S-U-N, appears to move. And it moves from east to west. As the position of the S-U-N in the sky changes, the direction of the incoming rays begins to affect the shadow that an object casts. So think about this for a minute. Please listen closely. The position of the S-O-N never variates. There's no variation, which means it never changes its position. That's what the text is saying to you and I, is that the position of the S-O-N never changes. But then you look at it further, it's because the S-O-N never changes, then it's, there's never any turns or shifts in any way. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You follow me? So thus, there's import the importance of understanding the source is that, yeah, may maybe the earth, you know, the, the things are revolving around me, but the sun is staying still. It's not traveling from east to west in my life. It's remaining the sh same. So my shadow, the, the shadow that it casts in my life, it never shifts. It never changes. There is no variation of it. There's no questioning of his character because of who he is. When we serve from and through one source, we serve through God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And here's the beautiful thing about this. This consistency in him over time uniquely begins to birth consistency in your character and in your good works. You begin to shift less, less, you follow me? People began to see your character because the character of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the person of Christ begins to exude your life, right? And the good, your works that maybe you start off in your faith with Christ ain't that good. In other words, you go to work and you just go to work because you just want to make money and you just want to go on vacation. I'm doing overtime because I want to do vacation. 
Get more money to spend on myself. When that shifts, everything shifts. And then God begins to, uh, through the power of his Holy Spirit, through the character of Christ through you, begins to display more than just an employee showing up to get a paycheck. And you know what that translates into in a lot of followers in Jesus Christ's life? Advancements in the organization. Because people don't, people of the world don't know how to define what they see. They say things like this, oh, he or she is a team player. They're a hard worker. They're really good at what they do. Then advancement happens. But so many believers go to work every single day with really bad attitudes. And Christ is never seen through your works. And then we wonder why we're stuck in positions. Because you haven't made the adjustment from I'm working for me to working for him. How can we ensure spaces available for your good works? We need to always start with he is our source alone. Amen? Secondly and lastly for today, you look at verses 7 through 10. It says, Again, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You can underline that in your Bibles or highlight it in your phones. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by, by the one Spirit, and to another the affecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. So here you find this kind of variation. You see this differentiation that's in the body of Christ, the uniqueness of the body of Christ. But what I want to take you back to is where he says in verse number seven, for the common good. The human tendency is this. I do this because this makes me feel good. I do this because I know I'm obedient to God now. And sometimes by God's grace, God's grace, he allows that to be the entry point of good works. But it cannot be the end all. It's kind of like this. You know, when a kid, a person grows up. We're all been, we're kids, right, at one stage. We grow up and there's this season of selfishness. It's just me, 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 me. And there's some adults, <laughs> it's still me, me, me. So therefore, there's this, there's this childlike behavior that, that exudes from a person because it's all about them. It's all about them. It's all about them. And then it begins to cause relational conflict and things like that because one has to com convert emotionally and, mature, uh, and through maturity, I go from I'm no longer a child that only thinks about himself. that there's other people around me that need me, that need what I've been given, what I can do. The same kind of development, spiritual developmentalness, if you would, happens within the body of Christ. People come, it's like, oh, praise the Lord, this feels so good, it feels so good, hallelujah, I'm growing so much. Keep feeding me, feeding me, feeding me, feeding me, feeding me, feeding me. But there comes a point in a person's life who walks with Jesus that you have to transfer, translate to and grow up and say, okay, it's no longer about me. It's about others. And when you see this, you see the variations of giftedness, the variations of of talents and skills 
thinking, processing, doing that God gives each one of us, but it is not only for us. But the beauty of the body of Christ is this. When I give away, what happens? It comes back. If the right hand is functioning well, it's going to benefit the left hand, believe it or not. Because over time, it will cause imbalance in the body. It benefits when every part of the body is functioning well. Same is true within the body of Christ. Is that when we do this good works, you and I must always remember it is always for the common good. It's not for me. As a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I cannot long and desire to stand in front of you because it makes me feel a certain way. Wrong motive. It's wrong motive. My motive must be, God, I need to hear from you for them. Instruct me for them so that they can draw closer to you. Make sense? So whatever you do, small or great, it has to be, God, I do this for your glory, but I do it for the good of other people. Now let's drill down on this real quickly. You see a key word here, the word manifestation of the Spirit. It simply means it is to make apparent the Holy Spirit. It also means to make known and to show openly the Spirit of God. So one day I was, as I was reading through this, here's this thought that came to me. Can you imagine if only 50% of the church use their giftedness and skills that God has given them according to this verse and according to this word? It is likened to this, and, and please stay with me. It's like you only see manifested 50% of what? His Holy Spirit, which you, that's not theologically proper <laughs> because you can't segment his spirit. You follow me? But just understand that, that there is this responsibility. It really says that each one of us have in the manifestation of who he is. He is seen in a more, more glorious, magnified way when everybody is working together. Again, take the human anatomy and the human body. If only your left side of your body was working, people would look at you and say, something's wrong with you. You probably need to go see a doctor. Right? And you're walking around saying, nothing's wrong with me. It's like, yeah, something is wrong with you. And truth be told, that's what the world is saying about the church. Something's wrong with this thing called the church. Right? Because the Spirit of God is attractive. How do we know? The Bible says no one can come to the Father unless he draws them. And the more we use our giftedness and our skill sets, or do our good works, the greater he is magnified, the more beautiful he looks, the more attractive he looks. And the drawing is happening in your life, in your family. The words common good means this, to contribute in order to help. So the manifestation of the Spirit contributes in order to help. The manifestation of the Spirit is profitable. It's beneficial. 
because of the Holy Spirit and his marvelous work in the hearts of his people, he has always been promised by Jesus that he comes to help. Remember he said to his disciples, I must leave to leave you home, a helper. The more we collectively do the good work, the more the helper is manifested. And the more we make ourselves available for the good work, the more the helper helps us do the work. He helps us do the work and he helps us become a church that's a sweet smelling aroma. That's a light in a dark world. That's salt of the earth. Because the Holy Spirit is our helper. And that's why if you look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, it suggests us, if you read this text from the, the lens of the common good, right? The lens of the common good based upon the scripture. And, and again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is our lens into Ephesians chapter 4. It says, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature, a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. So in there you find about five common goods. The first is your works equips others for service. It may be because you just rub each other the wrong way when you serve. Because that happens. You serve together and it's like, uh, I don't know, she makes me feel uncomfortable. He, you know, you know they're kind of rough around the edges. Well, maybe they're rough around the edges to smooth you out. Because that's what God does. He allows people in your life, people in the body of Christ, Remember we talked about last week? To remind us who we were. So we won't become full of ourselves when we're doing the good works. Equip others to serve. Your works builds up the body. Your works helps us attain unity. Your works gives knowledge of who Christ is. Your good works helps others mature. It's not just the pastor's responsibility. It's everybody. You see, as we serve, the Holy Spirit of God will always, always manifest himself for the common good. Amen? Let me end with this. The brain. Remember I shared with all, you all the other organs? The brain this is the master organ of the body. All the systems of the human body are under its control. Its essential functions include judgment, memory, reasoning, sleep, temperature control, body movements, reflexes, so on and so forth. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 says this, beginning of verse 15 says this he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created both in the heavens and on the earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him he is before all things and in him all things hold together this is Christ he is also the head of the body the church and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Please let us never ever forget that Christ and Christ alone is the head of the church. Thank God for church leaders, church servant leaders. Praise the Lord. That's part of the function of the body. 
I always tell people, never get it twisted. I am not the head of the church. I am only a part of the body functioning in my role, in my giftedness, in my skill sets. That's who I am. But Christ and Christ alone is the master organ. And any good work, church, that any of us do is only possible through him. Amen. Hello, my name is Sarah Vega, and I am the Administrative and Executive Director here at Commitment Church. I hope you've enjoyed today's message by Pastor Cedric Brown. If you didn't know, Pastor Cedric also sends out encouraging videos weekly. We call these the Weekly Wire. The acronym WIRE means Weekly Inspiration, Refreshment, and Encouragement. We can send these encouraging videos directly to you by subscribing at www.loveallnations.org. Again, that's www.loveallnations.org. Here's an example of the encouragement you'll receive. Have you ever found yourself in situations that you just don't understand? In other words, maybe you got newly promoted and you are now responsible to lead a team of people and you just don't understand your role and responsibility in these new direct reports. Maybe God has called you to something beyond what you can even think or imagine and you just don't understand why. Maybe you don't understand how to be a husband or a wife or a father or a mother. Maybe you don't understand even how to be a faithful follower of the person of Jesus Christ. Well, you see, the Bible says this, is that we have a God who is infinite in understanding. He is great and mighty, infinite in understanding, it says. So the next time that you lack understanding, just trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all of your ways, and His promises, He will make your pathway straight. This is Pastor Cedric of Commitment Church with another Weekly Wire reminding us all that if we lack understanding, we serve a mighty God who is infinite in understanding. Please pass this video on to someone who needs to know how much God knows to help them in their time of lack of understanding or of need. Please visit our website at loveallnations.org loveallnations.org. May God bless you. We hope you enjoyed the sample of our Weekly Wire. Again, to subscribe to your weekly inspiration, refreshment, and encouragement, please visit www.loveallnations.org Again, that's www.loveallnations.org Thank you for listening to Commitment to Truth, a teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.